Welcome back to another episode of Ham Radio Playground. In this episode, we're going to talk about the early Christmas present from the FCC. Kevin, what are you talking about? Early Christmas gift? From the FCC? Come on, Uncle Sam never gives out anything. Wrong. We just gained part of the 60 meter band back as amateurs. And there are some other great features that came out of this latest ruling from the FCC. Let's go over and take a look. So this information came breaking from QRPers.com. Thomas K4SWL is the originator who brought this to my attention. And as you can see, we have a brand new chunk of the 60 meter band. 5351.5 through 5366.5 kilohertz. So beyond the 60 meter channels, you also get this other chunk. Now, there are some little caveats to that. One, you got to be a general license, which you got to be a general license to activate in, in that area anyways. But they're also limiting it to 9.15 watts ERP. This is perfect if you're into QRP. What modes can you use? Obviously phone, CW, RIDI, digital. You just need to keep your bandwidth no wider than 2.8 kilohertz. Let's go ahead and take a look at this ruling from the FCC. So this was uh, worked on and adopted back in September, but as we all know, the government disappeared for a couple of months. It just got released yesterday. So what else do we gain from this new ruling? Well, there's protection of search and rescue satellites receiving in the 406 to 406.1 megahertz band. Space research service. Space to space. Hmm, what's going on there? 410 to 420 megahertz. Global flight tracking for civil aviation. 1087.7 through 1092.3. Satellite uplinks now in the 7190 to 7250 megahertz band. Earth exploration satellite services in the 9.2 to 9.3 gigahertz and 9.9 .9 to 10.4 gigahertz bands. <clears throat> Revision of the 18.142 to 19.3 gigahertz, 28.5 to 29.1 gigahertz, and 29.25 to the 29.5 gigahertz bands. Hmm, who's putting stuff out in those frequencies? Deletion of the radio navigation satellite service from 149.9 to 150.05 and 399.9 .9 to 400.05 bands. Hmm. Are we expanding something else? <laughs> Terrestrial issues, amateur service in the 60 meter, 5351.5 to 5366.5 kilohertz. Amateur service in the 420 to 450 megahertz band. Hmm. What changes did they make there? Deletion of the broadcast service, from the 700 megahertz band and deletion of footnote ng155 let's check these out and see what's going on because there's also other matters so they give us an introduction on uh, what they were trying to do why they're trying to do it what uh you know took place the satellite-based research was operating 406 to 4061 with the protection of out-of-band emissions uh, from an adjacent band. Uh, we missed a line here. Uh, it's talking about the footnotes. Um... Prohibit new fixed and mobile service frequency assignments adjacent to the 100 kilohertz band of 4059 to 406. 
and 406.1 to 406.2. So they're just making sure there's no interference, no bleed over. Allocate uh, 410 to 420 for space to space communications. Non-federal use. Orbiting manned space vehicles required compliance with the power flux density limit at the Earth's surface. Global flight tracking incorporates uh, Earth to space. <coughs> Be interesting to watch that to see if we have to make any changes for uh, ADSB stuff. Let's see, revision to footnote US 2248 to require federal system to utilize spread spectrum techniques for terrestrial communications, navigations, and identification in the 960 to 1215 megahertz band. Harmful interference not caused by aeronautical mobile, aeronautical radio navigation, military identification, friend or foe operations. Defer consideration for providing spectrum or secondary basis for non-federal Earth to space operation. Allocate 9.2.9 to 9.3 gigahertz and the 9.9 .9 to 10.4 for Earth exploration satellite services uh, for federal use and secondary basis for non-federal use. Um... 10 to 10.5 for military service. Revisions of the rules for 18, 28, and 29 gigahertz. Incumbent fixed stations no longer receive primary status, raising secondary non-federal fixed satellite service, so space to Earth. With co primary status. And delete the primary radio navigation satellite service allocation from 149 to 150.05 and 399.9 to 400.05. And allocate more to the amateur service. Of course, on a secondary basis. Um, update the coordination and contact information in US 270 for amateur stations operating in previously defined areas of 420 to 450, the 70 centimeter band. Delete the broadcasting service allocation at the 700 megahertz band. And delete footnote NG154 from section 2.106 as unnecessary and inapplicable under our current rules. Other matters, decline the addition of a new paragraph to the rules about certain space research, deep space allocations, amend section 2.1 according to adopt the work 15. Uh... Oh, they're fixing a typo. It's, it's, instead of ballon, it should be balloon. Amend uh, footnote, which appears in the U.S. table to the allocated services. All right, so let's scroll down and look at the actual decisions that were made. For detection of search and research satellites. Search and research receivers, NOAA. And you can go read this document. I'll put a link to it down inside our description so you can read the full document. I'm going to skip over some stuff that, that might not be interesting to a lot of uh, amateur radio operators, a.k.a. ham radio. Space to space. I think because we're putting more people up there with commercial services, they need to allocate some space. Uh, 
global flight. Lots of good stuff in there. I'm going to have to read this uh, more in depth after this video. There's a couple things that piqued my interest for other things besides ham radio that uh, I dabble in and play in. And, you know, w what else are you interested in that's related to frequencies and radios and everything else? Throw it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your, your exciting adventures in radio frequencies. Earth Exploration Satellite Service. Revision of those upper bands. Basically taking out some grandfathered fixed stations. Deletion of the Radio Navigation Satellite Service, 149.9, 150.05, and 399 to 405. Those two bands are allocated to the Mobile Satellite Service, Earth to Space, and Radio Navigation Satellite Service, both a primary basis for federal and non-federal usage. What are they planning on doing with it? With There we go. <clears throat> Section B, subsection 1, amateur service in the 60 meters. And 9.15 watts, effective radiated power. Maximum bandwidth 2.8 kilohertz and centered on frequencies 5332, 5348, 5385, 5373, and 5405. It's nice that we gained some, some more uh, usage in there. It'd be nice if they would open up the whole frequency as well as uh, let the ERP be 100 watts across the board. You played in 60 meters? Is that one of your bands you love hanging out on? Throw in the comments below. Share with us. Let us know. Love to hear your opinion on this new ruling and how it will impact your usage of the 60 meter band. There's some details in here, a little bit more about it. All right. Like I said, I'll put a link to this PDF down in the description so you can fully read all of the notes that were made regarding these changes. It's great to get a Christmas present from Uncle Sam. The FCC must have been all caught up on their uh, licensing. Were you impacted by that, that uh, license backlog? All right, section two. Amateur service in the 420 to 450 megahertz band. Commission's next proposal is based on a request from the NTIA was to update the coordination and contact information in footnote US 270 for areas where the peak envelope power of the amateur station operating in 420 to 450 is generally limited to 50 watts and to revise the cross-reference of the footnote. 
We received no comment on this proposal and implemented the NTIA's recommendations and will clarify compliance with our rules by updating the footnote. Deletion of the broadcasting service in the 700 megahertz band. Yeah, a lot's been going on with uh, broadcast television over the last few years. Not surprising they're making more changes there. And deletion of footnote NG155. Um, it's because they had 157.451.61575 megahertz in the table but because the frequency and the frequency bands to which it applies are not currently authorized in part 80 of the commission's rules Uh, other matters, Work 15 Final Acts also include a provision in Article 4, Radio Regulations 4.24. Use of Space Research Service Deep Space Allocations. Deep Space! Lots of good stuff in here. You know, not all of the rulings apply to amateur radio. But, uh, you know, we do have a gain out of here. We... We gain more bandwidth in the 60-meter band. Could have been worse. They could have taken a lot more stuff away. The rest is all procedural matters about how. you got to go for a Congress review, final ruling, all of that fun, fun, fun stuff, right? So follow the link down in the description if you want to go read more on there. So what other frequency allocations would you love to see the FCC open back up to the amateur radio hobby? I'm curious. Is there something that you'd like to see be available to us to use? Is there any other changes you'd love to see the FCC make? What's your experience with submitting proposals to rulemaking? Have you tried it before? Have you gone down that path? Some interesting thoughts there, right? All right. Just wanted to bring this news to you and share it with you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it the thumbs down. Let me know. You ain't, ain't liking it, brother. Got to change something up. But make sure if you're going to give me that thumbs down, you put a comment down there on why you did not like this video. That's it for me today. Time to kick the sand off my feet and get back to work. Till the next video. See ya!